Hey, what's going on there, folks? Good evening. It is the Earth Master back here on this Tuesday night, March 21st, 2023. Uh, happy birthday to a special Michael out there. My son uh, turning 20 today. Happy birthday, Michael. All right, uh, what's going on out here? Latest earthquake shows a 4.8 out here around the Philippines. Uh, seeing a cluster of earthquake activity ramping up there in that region once again. All right, let's see what's going on here across the flat scale model Earth here. There's that 4.8 coming in just south of the uh, mainland area here into the Philippine Trench, about 66 kilometers deep. Of course, this comes after, uh, well, we did see some deeper activity here into the Philippine Trench a couple days ago. Uh, noticing that cluster of movement here across the Banda Sea and the Maluka Sea area. Notice on the Earthquake 3D globe, we got a little bit more showing up here on the map than what the USGS is stating. Also, a pretty deep earthquake here, 4.7 uh, up north here into the Izu Trench. Got to watch this one pretty closely here because we can see some larger uh, earthquakes upstream around the Java tr or the uh, Japan Trench area. 4.2 coming in earlier this evening, 342 kilometers deep for that earthquake uh, up here along the Kurokam Chaka Trench. We're waiting. We're definitely waiting. This is building up some strain uh, for the next mega quake when it does happen. Who knows specifically, but I know that there's definitely enough accumulated slip right there for a very large earthquake. Just a matter of time. Uh, Lucian Trench, a little spotty activity here. West Coast area, notice a little increase from north to south. We did see some movement up here off the coast of Eureka. Uh, looks like just off the coast, 18 kilometers deep. And I think you guys know what's out there. That is uh, the uh, Cascadia subduction zone, the mega thrust area. Uh, the one that will produce a 9.0 or greater earthquake one day. The last earthquake was of that size was back in uh, 1700. 4.5 today though, that's all. Uh, also a 1.7 coming in. Um, where is that? That's much further down south. Uh, so we did have a little bit of activity off into the Blanco fracture zone as well. A 3.3. Um, all this earthquake uh, roughly within the same time of each other. So that means that there must be some tremor activity out here tonight. So let's go ahead and see what we got here for Cascadia tremor. There we go. That would explain it. Pretty large uptick in tremor activity. 121 epicenters of tremor roughly uh there at the southern end of the cascadia increasing activity out here along the blanco fracture zone um, pushing that plate here underneath the north american region i'm talking about the juan de fuca plate here uh, this whole plate kind of being subducted to the east underneath the north american plate and this thing can generate some very large earthquakes uh, but for now as you can see a little little bit of uptick uh, here off the coast of the San Francisco area did see some movement as well about noontime a 2.5 coming in a very shallow earthquake just off the San Andreas fault some movement around the Clear Lake volcanic field as well very typical a uh, little bit of uh, movement outside of Oakland not for sure what's going on out there around that jungle but we had 1.2 and a 1.0 uh, early this morning time frame, uh, a little spotty activity across the creeping segment there of the San Andreas Fault and Southern California rocking and rolling a little bit with a 2.0 near uh, Gardena. Is that right? Or yeah, I think that's Gardena, uh, California. Never heard of it. I've only been down to LA once and I will probably never, ever, ever go back in my life. Let's just, no, no, thank you. <laughs> 2.0, 12 kilometers deep uh, underneath this concrete jungle. That's literally what it is. Uh, if you take a look here, you can see nothing but nothing but civilization out there, folks. A lot of, uh, goodness, a lot of concrete out there. So what do we got? Uh, aside from that, a little bit of movement north of Pomona and the San Jacinto Fault Zone just to the west here showing a little bit of uptick. The infamous San Andreas Fault here, not uh, showing anything yet, but trust me, it's building up. It's been building up here for well over 300 years. The southern branch here, very capable of producing an 
magnitude earthquake verified, right? That's that's what uh, seismologists, geologists, and all sorts of professional scientists agree on. That's a big one. One day. Who knows? I, I may live to see it. I may not. You just never know. Uh, Yellowstone National Park. Let's see what we got going on here across Yellowstone. Um, let me refresh this. Double check. Make sure. Yeah. Doesn't look like there's too much activity here. Uh, across the Yellowstone area. This earthquake that's showing up here um, across the majority of the park is from that larger quake a ways away over here, folks. That's going to be this one right here. A 6.5 in Afghanistan, somewhat deep, 200 kilometers deep there into that area showing up uh, pretty drastically across Yellowstone. But far as seismic activity goes, doesn't look like there's too much movement here locally across the area just a couple small specks of an earthquake uh, throughout the yellowstone area uh, the rest of the country fairly quiet aside from the new madrid seismic zone where we did see uh, a couple earthquakes early this morning but nothing new since then some very small quakes out there uh, the atlantic ocean has been kicking up and we were expecting that all three earthquakes here kicked up literally within 10 minutes of each other 4.9 5.0 and a 5.0 goodness a lot of earthquake activity ramping up here that means things are getting ready to uh really kick up here across the uh general plate boundaries out here this is a divergent boundary separation of the seafloor and there's many different fracture zones out here across the atlantic <clears throat> excuse me uh so we gotta watch that when this really kicks up look for areas um with increasing pressure out here along the uh for example the eastern uh, pacific plate and the peru chile trench out here should start ramping up here more so than what we've seen uh also a 5.3 south sandwich islands making itself uh shake a little bit down there 5.3 at 10 kilometers deep at the southern end here of the south sandwich islands <clears throat> see if i can make it through this update folks i'm telling you it's full-blown today, whatever it is. I think it's just a head cold, uh, but it is full-blown, let me tell you. All right, uh, let's see. Make sure we didn't skip anything out there in the Atlantic. Looks like that's about it. One earthquake out here outside of Greenland from last night, but that was about it. Uh, let me cover South America here real quick, see what we got going on. A 5.6 earlier this morning uh, in the Chile area, just outside of Santiago, into the Peru-Chile Trench at 5 at uh, 65 kilometers deep the emsc model globe here shows a more earthquake activity in the two and three range across the south america region into the peru chile trench so things still kind of kicking up there in that area the middle america trench couple of fours up here doesn't look like anything being reported by the usgs but there is some activity being generated uh the puerto rico area uh, general, generally light movement, some twos and threes over the last 24 hours throughout that area. Uh, nothing showing up here across the USGS map far as earthquake activity goes into the Turkey region. Uh, latest quake looks like a 2.0 here. Some uh, early, earlier activity across the Mediterranean region and a 4.0 coming in. Uh, kind of curious to see exactly where that's at. Egypt. 4.0, <clears throat> 9 kilometers deep. All right, moving on. We are moving on. One earthquake here in China, it looks like as well. That one coming in this afternoon, a 4.2 at 10 kilometers deep in that area. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Pretty good clusters noted here across the region. So a couple different areas to watch, folks, for sure. Uh, the West Coast, I believe, firmly. Uh, with the elevated activity out here along the Cascadia, definitely noteworthy to watch the West Coast. Um, most specifically, New Zealand, I don't know, not a whole lot going on across Fiji, Tonga, or the New Zealand area. Let's see what's going on here real quick. Kind of skipped them, but let's double check and see what's going on. I'm not completely there, folks. I got a, again, a full-blown head cold, <clears throat> and it's a dandy. I haven't been this sick in quite a while, let me tell you. I don't go out though all that often, so not for sure where I picked it up, but I picked it up from somewhere. All right, uh, 2.1 an hour ago. Looks like it's starting to swarm still. We're continuing to swarm there around the uh, Bay of Plenty area in our swarm region. 
couple twos out there. Let's see what we got here for the earthquake drums. Give us a better indicator of what's going on uh, throughout the area. Looks kind of looks like it's kicked up here within the last few hours. No, some uh, twos and ones showing up here on the map. Nothing drastic. No major swarm. This over here is some type of error. Not for sure what's going on with that seismograph station, but it's not looking like it's working properly. Uh, volcanic drums out here across New Zealand. There is our most closest station. I do enjoy looking at this because this kind of gives us a good indicator of all the earthquake activity occurring around the Mount Tarawera area. This is picking up some very small microquakes, but also those twos and occasional threes out here as well. And that looks like that swarm is continuing, no doubt, there across North Island, New Zealand region. All right, folks, let's move on to um, not that one, but <laughs> pretty cool global fault active map. I want to check out the solar weather activity here. We're entering into that. I always tend to uh, pick that uh, time frame where we're entering into that blackout stage here with the uh, shadow of the Earth. Well, the interference of the Earth there blocking out the, uh, uh, I believe it's the Earth because it happens every 24 hours or so on rotation. So the latest imagery here, well, we have a massive coronal hole. Let me show you guys this real quick first here. 86. Uh, it is kind of looking a little sketchy here, uh, sticking out its arm or maybe its claw, who knows what. Uh, but we do have a massive coronal hole, and that does shoot out some high-speed solar wind charged particles. Not quite as sufficient as a massive CME, but still, nonetheless, these things can produce um, some uh, solar weather uh, activity. So uh, it looks like on the 24 time frame, we are looking at a G2 class storm here. Um, that's what the uh, folks here on the Space Weather Prediction Center are claiming. So G2 conditions, KP index up around potentially six. High latitudes, 85% chance of aurora's, mid latitudes at 45% chance. So it uh, looks like between the 18 to 24 hour UTC time there. So we'll continue to watch that. And we'll monitor that uh, tomorrow and the next day as it gets a little bit closer. But uh, either way, looks like things could be getting active there across uh, some of the higher latitudes, possibly the mid latitudes as well from this corona hole that's facing us. All right, charged particle or uh, sunspots out here. Goodness, <laughs> ready for bed again. We got, uh, well, uh, let's see. We got numerous sunspots here, but uh, doesn't look like they want to advance too much. Possibly down here in this regional sunspot. We do have a little bit of elevated conditions here for some solar flares. Um, up here, not quite as much. Let's see what our flare threat is. 95% chance for a C flare. M flare at 20. X flare around a 1% or so. Uh, but it doesn't look like there's going to be anything too powerful as far as the solar flare goes looking at the current data here just shows us hovering around the sea flare category uh even drop it off here a little bit so just continue to monitor this and see how it plays out there's the uh, mention of the g2 solar storm from the solarham.net site here so we'll continue to watch that uh, towards the end of the week all right, guys, uh, weather forecast here real quick. Uh, man, had some pretty good thunderstorms out here around my neck of the woods here in Northern California today. Uh, that's due to a uh, well, low-pressure system off the coast here, just around the Bay Area. Spinning up some moisture, kicking up some convection there. Quite a bit of thunder and lightning into the Calusa County area today. Some hail as well. Uh, we picked up a pretty good amount of rain. Looks like I got six-tenths of an inch of rain here in the backyard just outside of chico um looks like off and on rain showers throughout tomorrow uh before another storm system moves in with some impressive rainfall rates here on heavy duty snow once again i keep saying that my goodness i'm sure you guys have seen some of the uh the news out there houses buried up in the mountains uh feet and feet of snow this has been quite a winter here for california 
and it uh, looks like that's going to continue into the spring. Uh, this is around the Monday, Tuesday time frame of, of uh, next week. And uh, again, heavy duty snow and rain. Uh, that low pressure system will hit Southern California as well. Notice that uh, impressive rain down there. And uh, after that, uh, low pressure scoots out of here. Uh, but it kind of looks like it wants to back wrap some moisture here. So that will keep things uh, interesting there in terms of precipitation. And that's about it until about the 3rd of April. A couple of these forecasts, hourly forecasts, have not uh, chimed in yet. But it looks as though things will continue to stay uh, wet here, at least for the foreseeable future. There's that low pressure system out here. Uh, check out the wind gusts. That's pretty cool. Uh, wrapping around that low pressure just around the Bay Area. A look at the accumulated precipitation out here over the next... Uh, well, let me get rid of this here real quick. Uh, next 10 days or so. Not super... Well, nothing like what we've seen earlier this month or back in January. January. Uh, but it still looks like some heavy-duty precip... Uh, moderate precipitation, I should say, over the next 10 days. A couple inches more for the Sacramento Valley. Uh, new snow over the next 10 days, as you can see here. Nothing in the valley, uh, but definitely up into the mountain range. We're talking about feet of snow. <laughs> And this is already on top of feet of snow. So, goodness, it's been one heck of a winter, let me tell you. And we need it. I guarantee you, when they put out the next drought map um, in April, I believe it is, it will show California completely out of the drought. Um, and we'll, we'll check on that, though, a little bit later on. All right, folks, have a good one. I'm going to get out of here and go medicate myself here. It's just... Oh, it's a never-ending battle. Well, I shouldn't say never-ending. It just seems like it just started a couple days ago, but it feels like it's been going on forever. One heck of a head cold. I don't wish this on anyone, let me tell you. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys back here tomorrow. So, take care.